Hello, Internet. I'm Ren, and this is Ren Rants, a channel where I talk about things I care about. And today, that's the season two episode of Strange New Worlds, Lost in Translation. I'll start with some brief thoughts and impressions before we energize the transporters and beam down to Spoiler City. Are these Trek-themed spoiler bits working for you? No? Strange New Worlds probably has the most consistent quality in terms of a Star Trek show. It was good right out the gate with season one, and season two has mostly been really solid. And even the weaker episodes are still enjoyable to watch. This was certainly not one of the weaker episodes, though. I am so thrilled we finally got an Uhura episode this season. The emotional storytelling in this one is so strong and addresses the consequences of the penultimate episode of season one, while providing some wonderful opportunities for growth to Uhura's character. Celia Rose Gooding's performance in this episode is beautiful. They definitely made me cry more than once. We get a little more Pelia, but I'd hesitate to call it a Pelia episode. We also finally spend some more time with this timeline's Kirk and get some really wonderful moments from that. This episode features a lot of classic Trek themes that are executed exceptionally, including some good old misunderstood life form shenanigans. It reminded me a bit of the Voyager episode, The Void, but I'll get into that a little more in the spoiler section. Really, it can be compared to countless episodes across the franchise, suffice it to say, it had many of the qualities I look for in a Trek episode and is certainly a standout in terms of modern Star Trek episodes for me. So that's about all I can say without getting into any of the details. This video will have spoilers for Strange New Worlds so far and for the Voyager episode, The Void. There may also be references to other Trek shows, so be on the lookout. I will be going a little lighter on the summary this week because I'll be traveling and won't have as much time for editing. I'll be interweaving my thoughts as we go and sum everything up at the end. So let's jump right in. Uhura starts us off with a personal log. Communications officer's log, stardate 2394.8. The Enterprise is sent to a nebula at the edge of explored space to help set up a space station to collect and refine deuterium starship fuel. Pike is commanding the Farragut and the space station until it's online. He's Fleet Commander Pike this episode. That's right, the Farragut, our boy Kirk's ship. They're on the edge of Gorn space, which Spock mentions in a throwaway line to remind us of the potentially impending war with the Gorn. I assume Starfleet's primary motivation was the nebula's proximity to Gorn space. Please no, I don't want it. The Enterprise takes the opportunity to collect some deuterium for themselves with the Boussard collectors. It would be logical to use this opportunity to refuel ourselves. My thoughts exactly, Mr. Spock. Uhura has been having trouble sleeping and almost falls asleep at her station. Uhura, you awake there, Ensign? My eyes are technically open, Captain. Right as the ship begins refueling, she starts to hear a strange signal. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt, Captain. I'm receiving a signal. But when she tries to broadcast it or listen to the recording, there's nothing there. On speakers? Anytime, Anson. Uh, it's gone. She decides to run a diagnostic and recalibrate the communication system to see what's going on. And we get a scene with her reviewing a recording she and Hammer made to walk her through the process. Pelia is really sweet about Hammer. Hammer was our chief engineer before he... I know. She's one of my best students. But I also love how real she is. I'm sorry, I just said that because he's dead. Actually, he was just okay. We see more of the recording, and I miss Hammer so much. I won't let you blow up the ship, I promise. Not that! <laughs> Important lesson. Be less gullible. Hey! It was really nice that they brought Bruce Horak back for this episode. He's so lovely in this role. Uhura keeps hearing the mysterious signal. But now, it's paired with an alarming hallucination that features a terrifying zombie hammer, like Walking Dead level. <laughs> Mbenga checks her out in sickbay and tells her she was exposed to deuterium in the nacelle and has deuterium poisoning, which allegedly explains the hallucination. You have a mild case of deuterium poisoning. And that can cause terrifying hallucinations? Good job. Mbenga puts her on leave until she can get some sleep. You aren't going back on duty until I'm satisfied you slept. Una and Pelia are sent to the station to get things running smoothly so they can bring it online. Pelia thinks the station is in worse shape than it looks. Una clashes with her. Any underlying issues will become clear as we work. Mm. Aye, aye, Commander. Things come to a head and Pelia reveals she's found evidence of sabotage. If I had followed your orders to the letter, we would never have found evidence of sabotage. 
much. Uhura tries to get some sleep and is treated to a disturbing dream of the scene of her family's shuttle crash along with the mysterious sound. Kirk, who is soon to be first officer on the Farragut, beams over to the Enterprise to visit Sam. Hell of a ship. They initially seem to get along well, but there are daddy issues and resentment between them. We can make the old man proud in our own ways. Or not at all. It adds some layers to both their characters, but also makes Sam feel a smidge unlikable in an unfortunate way. You're making me look... Like what? Sam, what does my ambition have to do with you? Like instead of dealing with the issues he has with his dad, he projects it all onto his brother, who mostly just seems to be trying to live his life. Although Kirk can be a bit grating. Well, if you're so worried about impressing dad, then why are you wallowing in a science lab? It is funny how if we're talking about Sam Kirk and James Kirk isn't in the episode, then Sam Kirk is Kirk. But if James Kirk is in the episode, then James Kirk is Kirk and Sam Kirk is Sam. We know who the main character is. We get a scene with Chapel and Spock playing chess. They're trying to decide whether to let people know they're together, but Chapel wants to keep it on the DL for now. Uhura interrupts to let Chapel know she heard the sound before she was exposed to the deuterium. Chapel tells her she's just tired, but Uhura knows something more is going on. Yeah, I looked at your chart. Yoda, it's, you have a textbook case of overwork and exhaustion. The medical officers are really dropping the ball this episode. She tries to drink about it when Kirk attempts to make conversation. Uhura isn't looking for friends and cruises on out of there, only to be met with another disturbing hallucination. She comes back to reality when she bops poor Kirk right on the nose. She patches him up after he advises she shouldn't take him to sickbay. But Kirk does actually believe her and offers to help figure out what's happening. The point is, I am an exquisite judge of character. And I believe you. They decide to check with the Farragut's doctor to see if anyone else had the same symptoms. Good idea. I'll check in with the Farragut's doctor. Can I bring her your medical record? On the station, Una and Pelia discover a crewman who is clearly not in his right mind and bring him aboard for evaluation. On the Enterprise, Uhura has another hallucination. Pike checks in with her. Kirk joins them and reveals the Farragut's doctor got a call about the station's crewman, Ramon. Farragut's medical officer got a call about him yesterday. Who was also hallucinating. One of his friends was worried about him, said he kept talking about seeing things that weren't there. Ramon escapes sickbay and kills a crewman before fleeing to the port nacelle. Uhura tries to talk him down. I am begging you. Step away from the console. But he blows a hole in the ship while ejecting the fuel pod and is sucked into space. <laughs> Which we get a terrible, lingering CGI shot of. Why? That's certainly a choice. Kirk and Uhura manage to beam out just in the nick of time. We do get a nice little moment after Kirk and La'an bump into each other, though. James Cook. Sam's brother. La'an Noonien Singh. Stickler for orderly security records. And he reminds her they agreed to get a drink sometime. <laughs> I, uh, I should finish my rounds. I haven't forgotten that drink you owe me, by the way. Give me more! It's what fans crave! But I really like that Strange New Worlds takes time for these little character moments. They add so much to the show. But when you're a kid, you think... Why does he care more about strangers than he does about me? Uhura is disturbed by what she's just seen. Pike gives her and Kirk permission to go through Ramon's personal logs. I, and that noise. I think I am losing my mind. They realize he was having similar hallucinations about loved ones who had died. He was having the same kind of hallucinations as me. Kirk tries to get Uhura to take a break and eat something. Maybe get something to eat. I hear the mess is serving real cookies, not from the matter synthesizer. The man is obsessed with food in any timeline, and I love it. While she refuses the cookie, she does open up about her grief for her family and for Hemmer. It has some way of dealing with it and moving on. I don't know how. And they made me cry again. This episode should come with a dehydration warning since it will make you cry so much. Or else you'll burn out the receiver. Burn out the receiver. But Uhura has an epiphany, and they go to have a chat with Sam, who is a xenobiologist. Uhura re-examines her hallucinations, and they realize there are aliens living in the deuterium nebula, and that refining the deuterium is trapping and killing them. We're killing them. 
killing the ones they love, and they're terrified. And that's what they're making me feel. Unfortunately, the refinery has been brought online. The refinery's automated systems aren't responding to any commands. It's not shutting down. And they can't get it to go offline. We get another intense hallucination scene that Celia Rose Gooding acts the absolute hell out of. Keep going. And Uhura convinces Pike to destroy the station. The creatures that live in the Zuterium and the Nebula were killing them by pulling them into our fuel pods and our nacelles. And now the station's doing the same thing, but at a much larger scale. And after an evacuation, they do. Fire torpedoes! Torpedoes away. I'm sure Starfleet will be thrilled. But we do get a smiling hammer hallucination after the life forms are free to thank Uhura, and it just breaks my heart. On the shuttle, Pelia confronts Una about their beef again. You were my professor at the academy. Oh, I remember. You gave me a C. Una claims it's because Pelia gave her a C at the academy, but Pelia knows it's deeper than that, and it leads to a nice empathetic moment between them that helps us understand why Uhura was also avoiding Pelia. I'm a reminder that your friend died and I replaced him. And every time you see me, it treaches up all that sadness. We close out the episode in the bar with Uhura and Kirk. Sam tries to make up with Jim. I've been wanting to say, the Farragut is lucky to have you, Jim. I'm proud of you. Honestly. But it doesn't quite work out and he storms off. You're seriously not going to apologize. You know what? Forget it. Spock picks up the dirty glass Sam left behind, which made me laugh out loud. Sometimes he can be uh, frustrating. And Uhura introduces Kirk to Spock. James, our chief science officer, Mr. Spock. Spock, meet James Kirk, first officer of the Farragut. The start of a beautiful friendship. Overall, this episode had so much of what I love about Star Trek. The life forms were fascinating, even if we never saw their true form. Their method of communicating by using emotional connections to get meaning across was super cool and well executed. I think they rushed the ending a little bit, but they tried to pack so much in there that I can't really blame them for that, and the pacing overall was still pretty solid. As I said at the start, it does remind me a little of the Voyager episode, The Void, in which we see Voyager traversing a strange void where an alien species dumps their waste, which it turns out is killing another species that is indigenous to the void. Voyager helps them even at the risk of losing their quick way out of the void. In that episode, I also liked that Voyager offers the Malon, the garbage dumping species, the technology to simply eliminate the waste, but the one they were dealing with declined since he'd be out of a job if there was no more garbage. This would solve a lot of problems on my world. Unfortunately, it would also put me out of business. Sound familiar? Anyways, it was great seeing Paul Wesley as Kirk again. I love that he and La'an connected, even though she's still processing the loss of alternate Kirk. I'm hoping we get to see more of him before the end of the season. I really enjoyed seeing Kirk meet Uhura as well. I liked that he was the first person to believe her and help her figure out what was going on. The conflict between the Kirk brothers was also fun. And the first time we've spent any extended time with Sam in an episode, I'm a bit lukewarm on him, but I'd love to see him get more development. I also love that we got to see Kirk and Spock meet for the first time. That was both a huge and small moment at the same time, and it was just really cute and made me happy. The way this episode handled Uhura's grief and the uneven path to learning how to carry that burden without being overwhelmed by it was really beautiful. I still wish they hadn't killed off Hemmer because I loved his character and I felt like it was a bit cruel to fridge the father figure and mentor so quickly after he had started helping her heal. But this episode at least made the loss feel like it had the appropriate magnitude in a way that the episode All Those Who Wandered didn't quite achieve. Overall, I was really happy with this episode. This season has been very solid so far. I'm so excited about next week's episode with Boimler and Mariner aboard the Enterprise. That video might be a smidge late since I'll be out of town and I really want to do it justice. But that's all I've got for now. Let me know what you thought about this week's episode in the comment section down below. Like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Peter Sane.